a little background info on kanashi. Um, it a lot of times is made into flowers, but sometimes they'll be made into different things. I've seen foxes and I've seen goldfish, bunnies. So lots of cute things. And basically kanashi is just a hair piece. So it's not just the kinds that clip in, it's the hair sticks and the combs. So the origins of it goes back to ancient times when there was a belief that if you had a thin stick that you could stick in your hair, it would help keep away evil spirits and, or bad energy would be warded off. So it became something um, popular to do to wear it in your hair. And then like after time went on and it wasn't really so much a warding off bad spirits, it became like fashionable and all kinds of fun things were created from it. Um, this version, which is the pinched, is done by folding fabric. In your kit, you will have little fabric squares and we're gonna be folding them much like origami. And there's two different versions, the maru, which is rounded, and ken, which is um, mean sword. So it's a pointed version. And this was popularized back in the Edo period in Kyoto. Um, making the flower ones with the folded version. Um, and Edo is now Tokyo, which is where the Olympics are currently being held. And that, the Edo period was 1603-80. And originally the Kanashi came to Japan from China back in the 780 time period, 700 to 794. This one is the professional made one. And then this is more like what we're gonna be doing today. Um, just the single flower by itself. But if you ever look up the Kanashi online, you can find very large pieces. Some of them look like wisteria. So they just trail down like this, but it kind of covers the whole side of the face. And then there's whole head pieces, more like the traditional pieces they would have had. And those are more formal kind of things. So this type of kanashi then has been worn by women about 200 years and often done to match their kimono. So we'll get started at looking at all the stuff we have in our kits. So like I said, you have your fabric squares. You'll have some pearls, some littler ones. I did put in different sizes of fabric. Um, we'll start with the two inch ones because they're bigger and it's a lot easier to see on camera and also easier for you. You'll also have some tweezers and you can use those to fold. You don't have to use them if you're more comfortable using your hands with it. Um, the smaller ones, the tweezers tend to be a little more helpful. We've got our hair clips that we'll put on at the very end. You should have some thread in there and a needle. And then we also have the bigger pearls too. So yeah, here's the really small ones. So let's start, oh, and then there's also felt. I forgot to mention that. And you can either go without the felt, like these two, or you can use the felt. This one I actually had glued on using the felt and that went very quickly and easily. And you'll want to get your thread ready to start with because once you get it folded, you're gonna want your thread already ready there so that you can hold it in place. And if you're having trouble threading it like I was, I'm cutting it at a 45 degree angle 
so that I get a point in my thread. And I'm doing a double thread with a knot on the end. So now that I have my thread ready, I can start doing the folding. And I'll show with the tweezers and I'll show without. So you'll fold it in half, triangular ways, diagonally. And then you're gonna fold it in half again, meeting up your raw edges to make another triangle. And then, so we're doing the rounded, which is this one. And I have a single petal there. We're gonna take the outside edge and put it up to the top. And then you also take your back one and put it to the top. So I just do them both at the same time. It's a lot easier and it'll look like that. Now you can hold that bottom point where they all meet and just kind of adjust it to make that rounded. So I just kind of pushed in that center area. You can also shape it more once we've put all the pieces together because it'll lose some of the shape. Now at this point, you'll pick up your thread that you got ready, and just sew into it. And you can just do a single stitch to hold it in place until we're ready to sew them all together. And then I'm gonna tie it off with a knot. So there's a petal. And then I'm gonna get this ready again for my next one. And I'll show this one without the tweezers. So I'm gonna fold it diagonally, taking my right corner to my left corner. Folding right above that corner point and folding both of the bottom edges to the top point. And then I can adjust its shape, make it rounded. And so into Now these traditionally would have been made using a starch glue. So after the point that they made the shape, they would stick it in a starch glue. Um, I tried to do it and I don't have the right kind of starch, but they would just have a wooden board with a little bit of water on it and then the starch glue would go on there and then they would just stick it in. It would be able to be workable for a while before it would dry. So they could readjust the shape until they get what they want. And then they would take something like a felt surface that they would then place them on with that glue as well. Um, and to be a professional kanashi maker, and this would include all of the different styles along with the style. Uh, it takes about 10 years to master. And I watched a documentary. It was a 2019 documentary that they only have five recognized master craftsman kanashi artists in Japan. So I'm gonna get my thread ready again.
and make my next petal. You'll want to do five of them. That makes a pretty good flower shape. Folding over. Holding that slightly above that point. And folding those in. Just do my shape. Putting a stitch in it to hold it. And then I want to get my thread ready again. So I already had one done. So I'm going to do my last petal here. And I can adjust my shape. And yeah, I sew through those three layers there. After we sew them together, we'll be sewing the bottom like this. And I'll be showing that. And because this is my last one, I don't actually have to knot it off. I can go into that next step of sewing them together. So you're gonna take your next petal and put it right next to it, lining up those pointed ends and the rounded end together. And you're gonna sew them together using a blanket stitch. And you just sew these two edges You'll save this one for the next petal. And a blanket stitch is basically just going over the top there. So you're always sewing from whichever side you're, you decided to sew on, if you've got it facing towards you or if you've got it facing away. I'm on the underside, yeah, where the raw edges are. Because this side isn't going to be visible. And when your thread runs out, you can just tie it off and knot it. I still have a little bit of thread. So what I did, so I didn't have to keep tying off all the time, was just run my thread underneath all my stitches back to the middle. Once you get one done, you bring in your next petal. So when you do the next one, you're just gonna stitch it in just like you did before. And I'm having trouble holding it for some reason. So I'm gonna go from this direction now. Thank you. 
we can get any farther. So I'm gonna have to tie this off. And I'm just gonna pick up where I left off. And as I complete each area, I just add in the next petal. And the one that I have here that was professionally made, this one was actually done with what either was hot glue or a craft glue. And I probably had to wait on it to dry then. And then when you've got all your petals on there, you'll just take and sew up the last one, just like you did for all the rest of them, so that it makes a complete loop of them. It'll kind of look like a starfish on the bottom. So then after you finish sewing it, you can leave your thread on still at this point because we can sew our curls on but I would go around and trim any extra springs that might be around that you don't want sticking out. And this step you can also wait until later to do. You could also choose to not sew on a pearl. Instead, you could hot glue it. Um, you could also put other kinds of things in the middle, buttons, gems. Also after you've finished sewing you can kind of shape it a little more into what you want it to be. Get those rounded edges and then you can also sew this on or you can use hot glue to hold it on. I did find sewing it on a little difficult just because I had to hold this up while stitching it, but it is possible. So you'll just take it right up through the middle so that the string's sticking out of the middle. And you can just go right through the pearl. They already have holes in them. And stitch back down through the middle. And you might want to do a second time through just to make sure it's secure. And it's all set then. Then you'll tie it off. So we're on to the last part for this flower which is attaching our clip. We can sew that on. And I need to get more thread before I can sew mine on. Yeah, and if you still had a lot of thread, I guess you didn't need to tie off. You could have just went into sewing from there. I'll also show, show you how to do the just gluing it on version. And that's what the felt's for if you're gonna do the gluing.
I'm just gonna sew here on the back and through the hole in the clip. You only wanna sew on one side so you can actually open it. And at the same time, you gotta hold it open so that you can sew in there. That's why it's a little difficult. I found the best way to do it is just to do a couple stitches in one spot to hold it in place. And then further down, I want to stitch it so it doesn't just slide around. I'm going to stitch it here on the end as well. And I'll show the hot glue and felt version with our next one. Because we'll do the Ken folding. Next. So once you find that it's secure and not sliding around too much, you can tie it off with a knot and you've got your finished flower. And if you want to, you can go back and kind of reshape them if you kind of squished it while sewing like I did. It'd also be a good point to trim any threads that are showing. So I'm gonna get my thread ready for the next one. Just tying a knot at the end. This pink fabric, if you got any of that, is very similar to the one of the common fabrics used for this, um, which is Chim Riemann. It's a rayon kind of crepe, this one. They also often come in a silk, and that's used to kind of give it a little more fluffiness as opposed to the cotton fabric ones. Another fabric that is often used is called habuta. Okay. And that's more of a shiny, satiny kind of looking. Uh, I don't have any of that fabric. And it's actually highest grade lining for Japanese clothes. I've seen kanashis made with ribbon and it kind of has that similar look because it's that shiny. Yeah, if you look on YouTube for tutorials, there's a lot of people that do it with ribbon because they don't have to cut out full squares. They can just kind of do little cuts and they'll actually use like a lighter to stick it together. So this one is the Ken folding technique and it is the same for the first two steps. So you just fold it in half diagonally and then you fold it in half like we did before, taking the right side to the left side. And then instead of like how we folded it up, you just take 
and fold it in half again. I took the bottom to, or the top down to the bottom corner and it just makes a pointed petal. It's often used for the chrysanthemum flowers because those are more pointed, also used for leaves. And then when like they make more of shapes like the goldfish, bunny and fox and that, it's usually made with the pointed ones to form a shape. So then after you get it folded, we're just gonna sew that bottom corner again. Now this one, you can either do the five or you could fit more in. Like I did the five with this one, but there's definitely space here that I could put about eight of them in. It depends on how full you want your flower to be. I'm actually gonna switch to the pink. So folding in half, folding over to the right, and then folding just a third time. So in the bottom corner, through all the layers, and tie it up. And I'm gonna do eight to see how that looks with that many together. I didn't remember to get my thread ready before it, so <laughs> my fabric is not going to hold its shape. So I have to fold it again. these. Now in more complicated ones, they would layer them. In our case, we're just going to sew them together to make our flower. And with these ones, when you're sewing them together, because it's not as like separated, I found that just sewing through all of them worked well. So I'm just gonna go through all of the layers, which is like 16 or so. But then I only sewed to like a certain point on here so that I left this end open so it could become a fuller flower. So like I'm gonna sew them together oh. that way. And then 
towards the middle of sewing them together. Then I just sewed the eight together. Oh, okay. Because it was just so narrow that it was hard to separate the two. And then it ends up looking like that. And then the next one, we added on, I just sewed into, again, that like half area. And it was about through all 16, not so much through that one. So I kind of looked at where the middle is right here, just at least for the first couple of stitches so that it, I could get then to the middle part here. your fabric. This is quite a big flower I made with the eight petals, or I guess fluffy flower, I guess, is more like it. So I might need to squish it a little to get it to sew up that last edge. I'm going to really make sure to tighten my last stitches to get that in there. I can sew them all together. I'm hard to get into that last piece. So mine has quite a bit of like extra corner area in here. So I'm gonna pull it in a little bit by just stitching down into it. And also I have one that I missed a layer so it's kind of sticking out really bad. So what I'm gonna do for that is go up into that area and tuck it in 
and stitch that tuck into place. So eight might have actually been too much for this one. Well, I guess you'll learn as you go. And it might have been okay with the cotton fabric like this. It's almost like a poinsettia, actually. And it's that full. So then we'll just add on a pearl like before, sewing the middle. So when you're ready to start gluing on the back, You'll take some of the felt and it's any color you want. It's going to be on the back, so you're not really going to see it. Here's the one that I did that with. And cut out a circle that would fit the back that's not too big that it's hanging over, but not super small that there's not much to hold the pin on with. So that's actually a little big. So it kind of looks like a sunflower that way. And then we're going to glue on here. And we'll also glue on the back of the flower. And I've got my hot glue. I'm gonna go. Put some glue on here. And then some glue around here. Mine's very hot, so I don't have to be in a super rush about it. And then you find the one that's a little angled upwards. And that's gonna be the one that's on the top that you clip in. You just clip it like that. And then you stick it onto the back here. There you go. Then you gotta let it cool before you put in your hair or else it'll get, not be a good situation in your hair. <laughs> but um, right after that, after it cools, your hair piece will be done.